So I started recording and uh, now let it, I'll move it, I don't know, 50 meters so I know the distance, 50. And I'll switch this angle for the local coordinate system to zero. So I know when I'll get it back where it was, so it's 50 meters. Okay, to 200 meters. Okay, I think it only moved the deck. I'll select now the other elements as well. Oh, I think uh, they are on a different drawing. Okay. okay, actually I think I'll hit Control A, we'll select everything that is active because I grayed out the other in 200 meters. So they're 200 meters upwards. And you placed that line in a special drawing or uh, that purple line you started with the road and everything. You started to draw, okay you placed it on, I guess you placed it on the same, uh, okay we'll move it now in a separate drawing and we'll call it red line. And now uh, I'll select, I'll use a filter, what, no, 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 not, not like this, you have one problem now, you have the bridge and the line on the same drawing, so we need to filter out the line, so we select the line using this filter, filter by color, okay, and uh, I will use this uh, pick tool, match properties from graphics, and I'll select this line. And now if I hit Control A, it will only select this filter line, the uh, color 8 line. So I hit Control A, or it should work, Control A. Can you... Uh, tie, uh, Press Ctrl A to select all. Mm, then it's not the color. Uh, let's see. If I select this and I go to properties. It says color 15. Okay, so I'll change the filter to 15. I'll hit Control A. Okay, now it's selected. Control X, which is cut. And uh, now I have, you can see here up, it says red line. So the active drawing is uh, drawing file 5. 
and I'll hit Control Alt V or this one paste to original position and this way I make sure that the line is placed uh, in this 5 fifth drawing and uh, not on the same drawing with the bridge which will help me filter out so I can uh, not be disturbed by, by the bridges Okay. Yes, if I double right click on your line, it it should uh, import its uh, properties. However, here I see it didn't. It took orange color. I want to, so I double right click on this one. Okay, and it um, it activated the function you use the line with all its properties. And now we should continue somehow this uh, path. So if you can continue, it's easier for you uh, because I uh, have a lag. So yes, connect the two lines and then uh, try to go through the middle of the bridge. Uh, okay, but uh, so there's a problem. Why does the line uh, is not continued? We need a continuous line. Uh, yes, uh, yes, the same line. So, uh, okay, it continues. It's okay. Okay, and fix the ending point so it matches. Uh, okay, so we'll need to cut afterwards the line, so we don't get this kind of divisions. So we have to remove the extra, okay. Uh, auto delete uh, segment you should pick I don't know Yes, uh, uh, well, no, 
to try to approximate. We can't wait for the bridge company. <laughs> Okay, and auto delete segment, or we can just delete them. Okay, and I think we should just move the point, or we can delete it and then connect the last part. Do another line in between them, so okay. Okay, so we have okay, it's good. We have this line. Uh, we will just will now deactivate the other drawing so it's easier to follow. So what I'll do is Leave just the red line and we'll open a new we'll call it bridge bridge deck. Okay, so this is what you the line um, isolated, that's why I wanted to place it on a different drawing. Okay. okay. So basically we have a tool in all plan that can help us uh, do a bridge if we have the red line and uh, varying points along the line. We can uh, do the bridge just by uh, assigning, um, assigning a cross section. Uh, what I'd like is also to open again to, to view how uh, the section of the bridge looks like from the Bing maps. And here we'll activate the bird's eye view. Okay, so it's it has two lanes. This area and uh, we will uh, choose a cross section that matches this uh, this path uh, let's see some dimension i used when i first made when i made the first model so uh, we'll look into it reference model And I'm going to create a section through this area. I'll change the angle to be according to this line. And then I'll say I want a section.
Okay, so the thickness I chose was I'll place some dimensions. Yes. No. The red line is an imaginary line that is on top of the bridge. Exactly in the... No. If you were a bridge designer, before starting to do the bridge, you would receive the coordinates for the red line from the one who is designing the road. So it's their job to do the surveying and uh, to establish where the bridge should go through. So actually, we we would if we we were going to design this bridge, we would need those points from the road from the construction in Canada. But uh, as time is pressing us, we are inventing the red line or based on the maps. But in a real situation, we just receive the points. So this is where the the design starts after we receive the red line with all its co co points on it. So it would be more realistic because this is how we would do in reality this bridge if we were to design it. But even so, uh, not to <laughs> do nothing, just uh, wait. Uh, we we invented, we walked in plane with the red line. The only problem is. One aspect is we did some approximation to establish where the middle of the bridge is. Uh, the photo from the satellite is on the curved planet, so it's not uh, that well placed. And the other aspect, we have no information regarding the vertical uh, coordinates. So, because we only uh, did them in plane. But we will uh, do some variation on vertical a few meters just to make it look like in uh, the longitudinal profile from this PDF uh, we've opened. Because uh, you see here, it, uh, from 8 to 9, it goes upwards and then goes down. It has some elevation, but it's an elevation less than 10 meters, as we see on this scale. So uh, we will start from the line in plane, but uh, the problem is we also need to assign a section. So we have to approach, one is to choose uh, a section from the library, and other would be to draw a 2D section of the bridge and assign it to our particular bridge. Uh, just a second, I like also some dimensions here and change the scaling a bit so the numbers will be bigger 12 meters for 100 centimeters and 12 meters again okay so this can be the top of the of our, our bridge uh, so we have this um, I like to show how this first how this bridge modular works and then we'll apply it to our bridge. So if we imagine this were our red line, I'll go to tools. And let's say we had this this would be the red line we would receive from the people designing the road also we will do some chamfering as to be more realistic a fillet between the two lines and so this is the road so basically the design of the bridge starts from uh, the road the engineers so they give the coordinates for the road and we need to 
design the bridge that uh, goes over an obstacle and res is re respects this uh, line because this line is calculated by them to have the optimum slope and optimum slope and to reduce the consumption of uh, gas okay so it's not a problem we need to bind this into one line we'll go to this terrain module and here we'll say composite element we'll give it a name we'll say one it doesn't matter and we will just combine these two elements into a single element okay okay so we finished so i did a kind of merge something similar to creating a polyline out of some elements so this can be a trajectory of our bridge and what we would need now is to export the points on this line and we'll do like this we'll go to tools and uh, we have this import export point files and we'll say here export uh, and now we have some uh, type of uh, files we have uh, coordinates which means we can export points into files we have composite element uh, and this is useful in our situation because we created a composite element made of some lines some chamfering some circles and uh, some other types of exports so we'll choose composite element this is the, the let's say the format for the points how it uh, how what is the format of the points so for instance this re2 means uh, that we have uh, the delimiter dot for between coordinates for decimal uh, values and uh, the comma between the coordinates so it's just a formality we choose re2 we chose composite element export we hit apply and then we do a click on this line and the program will ask us where to save the coordinates okay you choose a place we'll, uh, now we are exporting a file uh, with the coordinates of this line so choose a uh, somewhere where we should save this file because we'll need it very soon so what I'm doing now is exporting coordinates of the points that define this uh, line. Okay. Uh, I'll say example one. Save. And uh, select file process. Okay. Okay. We did. We did all we needed. Um, so basically now we exported the points from this uh, line and we'll go to the bridge we'll go to tools we'll select the bonus tools and here we'll go to bridge uh, civil engineering component okay and here we will start by uh, uploading this root so basically the red line it can also be considered a root defining uh, the path from where we're going so uh, I'll say now new root actually no I'll say import root import root root in plane so this is in plane because we have no z values so we only gave uh, let's say x and y coordinates so it's only a plane value uh, as you can see lower we can also have a profile section of root so if we were to have a precise profile something similar to this uh, document so we would have also a line the red line uh, seen longitudinal so how it varies on the z coordinates we could uh, upload those points uh, but for now we have only the plane points and we can alter the z coordinates so now uh, uh, we should go back uh, please pick the where you save the file of course all plan okay and set example one 
uh, hit open and this uh, will be as let's see for truth it doesn't matter now we will use this these features on your real bridge where we'll uh, divide the bridge in different portions so we can apply uh, different cross sections I'll hit OK a total of three root sections have been imported OK and now what we can see here is uh, it gave us a random uh, section but this is mainly how the bridge will uh, it divided the bridge in some point so you can see here we have this uh, line which is actually let's say an, uh, an unfolding of this line so if we were to project this on a straight line it will be this line and uh, it divided our uh, we I remind you we have two straight lines and one curve that unites the lines it divided in 35 points we could do uh, even finer uh, let's say division of the points but we'll leave it like this and now we'll just need to define a new cross section for this bridge we can use this uh, predefined custom section variant where we can uh, select a template if uh, none of these templates help we can uh, define a 2d cross section and we can attribute to this uh, this bridge well, first we'll, I'll show you we choose something from the catalog and then we'll do from scratch something uh, 2d and give it as a dimension for the bridge Okay, we'll try to approximate. It was 12 meters. Uh, well, okay, this one. I, oh, okay, 12 meters total. Mm, let's say here three or no two, and here will be ten, ten, two, and also here we'll give some dimension. Let's say one. We can see in the Yes, 2% the slope. Okay, and also here is 2%. Okay, we also need to do something here. You see, we have a preview of what we're doing just behind them. We can see how it would look. Uh, from what we're doing now, of course, we need to increase here some values as well. Let's see, three, three, and I don't know in this area, one, it's too hard because we don't have uh, the exact shape. Well, we normally we would need uh, to have the drawing where we do something in 2d and then change the coordinates to obtain something it doesn't matter i'll leave it like this so this can be a cross section okay if it's not that nice we can choose another cross section just to for this example we'll just hit ok so this is a cross section and basically this cross section is made up of 19 points where it can be added, any point can be reason. For instance, if I go to point 18, I can do a modification here. I can raise it a bit, let's say one meter, and uh, if one meter was too much, but uh, well, two percent. But uh, I didn't choose the, this uh, area, so I'll just say 0 0.1. Uh, of course, is easier it would be to draw it in 2D and then import it. But I'll leave it for now like this, and then uh, shortly we will import just that section we we generated. So mainly we choose a section here. I'll hit close. Yes. So this is a starting section. So uh, from point one, it will the bridge will start like this. If I want in the middle, let's say, to do a variation, I can choose a point in the middle, let's say, in this area, well, this area is pretty tough, but uh, I'll choose something like here. For instance, I would like another cross-section. I can say define new cross-section, 
and I'll choose this one okay and uh, yes we can also do here I won't do any modification because I modified the first one but what is interesting is the program will make some changes so it will go from this point to this one and it will vary the section so if we know where it starts from it will do the variation so I just increase with 10 centimeters on top here the point 18 was 10 centimeters above and, and as I scroll through the points they do the variation where I didn't do that modification this will be helpful also for the proposal if you you've seen in this uh, you have some variable cross sections on some of the proposal they go from one cross section and uh, where they in the proximity of a column it the section is taller but this is different from oh, okay this is more friendly you see here there are also cross section that go from one to another mm, here it's more explicit you see it goes from this section into this one and basically they have the same number of points but uh, they have to do a change between them so they need to the section is changed and the program can in interpolate and generate this change you only need to define this if it's too complicated with coordinates we can simply import it in all plan draw as we started we already have some sections yes 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 I remember okay so basically this is the main uh, philosophy of the bridge model I just say now file export root not to excel export root no okay I'll say save okay bridge example and now I'll say file export root and now I have to place this bridge I'll place it on this uh, line and hit escape okay let's see where it placed uh, just a second good thing we saved it um, let me eliminate other points go back to tools I'll open again the bridge we just edited export root I'll hit enter ok and close it I think it's somewhere a bit far from the origin. Hmm. I'll hit undo. And now uh, let's go to another drawing. Uh, I'm not sure. I think it, it uh, places too far from the line, but it shouldn't do like this. Uh, I want to check, so I'm importing in an empty drawing so when I say zoom extend it should extend here export root and I'll say to these coordinates zero okay finished okay we'll check it again so this is uh... so we had that red line and now we define that those sections and uh, it just went along this path what would be interesting is if we vary something in it so for instance we will also vary the vertical coordinates so uh, on this example we'll go to let's say point we have this axis here 
with all the points and let's say here at 21 we'll do a variation vertical we'll say here edit station point and we can change the z coordinates so let's say 10 meters for instance and the height so all the other points are uh, zero we can do some variation here as well so for point 19 because we imported we started from um, a, a line placed in plane so all our points although they have x and y coordinates they don't have they have no z coordinate that's the main problem the red line uh, uh, should bring both information x y and z coordinate okay so I can manually do some changes. So here I'll, let's say, start uh, changing some points. So eight. We can preview here what I'm uh, doing. Okay, 18 can be on the same level. Yes, but uh, I want some variance. 19, okay. 19. Say nine also twenty should be ten. Okay, so we did this vertical variation on this path, which say again save. So we have this file which has all the settings, and then I'll say again what. And your, of course, all plan. It's an AKB file. And I'll say now export root. And hit escape. And normally we should see that variation. So if we look from the front. Uh, why didn't update? Hmm, let's see. I did not save it. Well, um, okay, I'll do something else. I'll place another bridge, but it should have just updated this one. Uh, I'll say I'll go to tools, bridge civil engineering. I'll open this example where we have the modification and I'll say export. Okay. And now I think it did it. Oh no, it was just a preview. I should have clicked enter. So I'll just confirm with enter these coordinates. And uh, now if we look from the front, we see the modifications. So We had this uh, variation and it went well. It's not a natural variation, but it did uh, vertical also. So normally for designing a bridge, we would need to do like this. I'll do another example now. Uh, we have just a second more tools. We'll do again the example. But this time with uh, also with uh, longitudinal profile. So we'll uh, we'll imagine we're doing like something like this. Uh, okay, we had that vertical. So we'll have a bridge that looks like this in plane. We'll also fillet the lines. And 
and we'll do again the composite which will find the function in the terrain it's a sort of polyline just that it needs a name let's see one a it doesn't matter and I'll click on a line and then uh, do a right click and select the other element so the circle this other line circle and line okay and escape so now it says composite element so it's an element that can be exported as points and now we'll do something else we will uh, create a longitudinal profile so we'll imagine that our road will go like this straight uh, it will be a bit straight then it will go up a bit Okay, we'll retain coordinates then. And here. So we get this bump. And we can export this as a longitudinal profile. So uh, imagine, actually, if we were, okay, I'll show you how we can obtain the longitudinal profile exactly for a Champlain bridge. Actually, it will be your homework. Uh, in order to make this, uh, so this is the longitudinal profile. Imagine this is the, uh, op we unfold this line and this is how the Z va uh, varies. So actually what I drew now in 2D is this uh, longitudinal profile. So the variance of uh, the Z coordinates. Uh, this is only a cross section, but lower I can find the longitudinal profile. Okay, this is a longitudinal profile through the bridge. So, uh, imagine I'm drawing the line on top here. So, this is how the line will vary if we look from the front, let's see the longitudinal uh, section. So now what I need to do is first export the plane points, which will be this element. And I'll go to tools and I'll say export point file. I'll hit this composite element, right click. Uh, and hit, no, actually hit apply and click so once again we go to tools so after we define that composite element we'll just go to import export points we'll maintain the same settings we just hit apply and then click on this composite element we'll say example 2 save and now this one we'll need to transform into uh, um, profile so we have some steps to do this first of all I like to transform it into a single polyline so I'll go to basic tools and I'll say make lines to polylines I select this line and now it's a single line it's a polyline and next we'll go to tools we'll go select from here the terrain the terrain and then uh, We'll go here and we have to convert this into a 3D element. Okay, we'll make like this. We'll maintain this line. But uh, in order to be able to convert this into a profile will actually need to simulate as if we were having a real terrain and to do this we can uh... okay okay uh, now i i have a better idea <laughs> to make this more realistic uh, so we'll start the exercise again but we'll do like this we will create a 3d line uh... The 3D line, 
will be like this. Uh, it will maintain, it will look in plane just like this line. However, it will also have some uh, vertical variance. So I'll copy this line. I only did a copy of it. I will uh, explode this into a simple line. And now I like to convert this into a single 3D line. So I'll go to Tools, Bonus Tools, and I will uh, do a conversion from this 2D line into a 3D line. Because this is also something we can receive from the one designing the road, a, a 3D line, where the road should be going. So we will create that 3D line because this will be essential to do on the curved areas where you started to draw the purple line. You started on that road. Uh, it also has vertical variance. So, okay. What I did was to convert this into a 3D line. And now in order to make a 3D polyline, I will uh, place some construction lines to have something vertical for our road. So I'll go like this 3D line. And let's say I'll pass on these curves a uh, 5 meter line. Okay, okay, 5 meters seems mm, too, too few. Let's say 5. 10 meters. So I place this as a construction line. And also I'll place another vertical element because actually I'm using this vertical elements to be able to have a vertical uh, variance. So it's also on uh, Z, uh, the variation. And now I'm going to tools, 3D line, and I'll create this uh, 3D line. Actually, I can create also 3D spline. Let's say 3D line, and I choose this spline, so it will look just the same. Go here, select this top point, this point, and then this one. Because if I didn't have those construction lines, I wouldn't be able to make it very, very on vertical. Okay, so this is actually, this is how a red line should look. So it's something that varies in space. It's a line that is always on top and in the middle of the road. And this is where the road designer, they finish their work by doing some profiles and they export this line. Either they give the 3D line or they give uh, two profiles. They, they uh, give a longitudinal profile like this one. So except that they don't place the bridge, they only place the line and the coordinates. And the representation in plane and uh, uh, the alternative is to give the coordinates, the points. So this is what we would be expecting from the bridge company, but it's no problem. We don't have it yet. Uh, we have now this 3D line and we'll make, make it into a digital terrain model. We'll go to tools, we'll go to uh, terrain. And uh, we'll uh, select this option, convert uh, 3D entities to digital terrain model. Okay, we'll place it in drawing 8. Okay, and select this 3D line. Okay, nothing spectacular happened yet. Uh, I will just copy this line. I'll hit Ctrl C as I'm going to need it soon. And I'll go to this 8, which is result 3D to digital terrain model. 
okay what i'm actually having here are some points so this is a grid uh, i'll just activate the grid so you see it better i'll go to representation and it can also show us mesh points triangles so it basically what it did was on those points we previously seen it did some triangulation and created the surfaces why i need this is because now i'm going to paste this line So this is actually the profile in plane of the line and uh, I can generate a profile through this imaginary terrain. It's not a real terrain, it's only a triangulation of the points placed on the line. We'll go to tools and we'll ask here for profile, sec profile section. I'll hit on this line and uh, just, okay this and clipping path is created by this line okay so i created i just did two clicks one on the digital terrain and one on this uh, 2d line and we are and now i'm going to export those points i will uh, say uh, export point file and here i'll select lpr so this uh, longitudinal profile, I'll uh, apply the settings and hit on this uh, green line. Mm, it should work. Just a second, I think I, I need to check if it created the profile. So if I go here to activate profile section and hit on this line. This is the profile. So this is actually the profile of the line. You see here is the height and the length and the, on top is actually the variance of our vertical line. So if we were to have a real terrain, we'd only go with the red line through the terrain and then generate this cross section. And what I want to do now is to export this variance of coordinates. So I'm going, I will be going to tools export uh, profile longitudinal profile okay why it doesn't click on longitudinal profile well this is mm, let's create it again it should just ask us for where to save the points. Actually, if this is to, it looks really complicated. We is because we are doing now another specialities job. We're doing the job of um, of the road designer. But uh, we can manage also if we just vary some points, as I've shown before. Uh, I'll generate another section. So this is a digital train model, and the path. We need a longitudinal profile. And I'll click on this point. Okay. And now I'll go back to this tools. Export. RPR, okay, everything seems okay here. Okay, uh, so I clicked uh, on that line, I double clicked actually, and now it asks us where to save this uh, variation of points. So, uh, I'll still in course all plan, and what I'd like to show you just to, let's say, uh, simplify things, not to look that complicated what we're doing actually is to open the files we just exported we'll go to course all plan course all plan and uh, we'll go here to we exported some 
points. Okay, and we can open this with a uh, notepad actually. If I go to here and type notepad. I will, I can drag and drop it here. And this is all we needed actually. So it looked that complicated, the fact that I had to convert to 2D, uh, to create a 3D spline and then uh, make it a digital train model. And then using the plane projections or the plane line to create the longitudinal profile. But actually this is information that we were looking for from the beginning from the road designers. So this is actually normal days work. Uh, so people starting to doing a bridge even on paper, we start with this kind of coordinates. So if it looks uh, too complicated, I can help you also for Champlain bridge. I'll uh, give you the longitudinal profile and then we can export these points and we can arrange them in Excel. So if this second option for exporting the LPR looks too complicated, we can export, we can draw it in plane, export the points, and then we'll change them, uh, their, uh, let's say, their format to be exactly as this file. Because if we look on the RE2 file, it will look a bit different. If I hit notepad and I drag this here, it looks uh, like this. The first value, no, actually, no, it's uh, actually the name of the point, the x value and the y value, that's all. So this is the x. No, 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 they are still uh, 2D points. The only difference is the fact that here we have the number of the point, the name of the point. Yes. The, the X. No, no, no. It's already, you don't have a, here is only one number. Yes, it's uh, 246,000. It's only one number. Oh, actually, no, you're right. Here is the third number. Yes, yes, okay. Uh, it's no problem. Actually, we can uh, do some adjustments. Uh, okay, I opened the 3D, sorry. <laughs> this wasn't the file we created today. That's why we have three coordinates. <laughs> This was exported from 3D line. That's why it has three coordinates. We, uh, where is it? It, I called it example two. Yes, so you are right. That was 3D point. The only problem is the bridge modeler doesn't work with, a, doesn't want a file that contains all three coordinates. Want a file that has X and, uh, the name of the point, X and Y, and another file that has X and Z. But that's no real problem. Here is how it X looks like. Uh, so basically it has some simple variation of the point. Uh, it looks, but it's, uh, it may look complicated, but it's X, Y, and the others, I don't think they're relevant. I don't know exactly. Uh, I am on, a, I don't know. <laughs> To be honest, uh, I don't know. These are the coordinates, and we exported a point. Uh, well, I'll look into it. I'm not sure. This is also for road design, it's not uh, relevant for us. Uh, okay, but let's see now how we managed to complete the bridge We're using the cross section. I just want to check your catalog. We had here symbols that you created project. Uh, Champlain, no. Where did you save them? You saved them in uh, Assistant, I think, in uh, the wizard. Okay, this. Uh, okay, so this is one cross section. This is 
another cross section. The only problem is they need to have the same number of points. <laughs> so uh, in order to use them, we would need to make sure they have the same number of points. Uh, we'll do like this. I'll just drag one example just to okay so this can be the first cross section and I'll, I'll do a copy of it, do a modification, and that will be the second cross-section. Because if I'm only doing modifications on it, I'm sure I have this exact number of points. So I'll do, I'll try to make it look similar to the second cross-section. I'll go like this. I'll extend it and then narrow it. I'm using the stretch entities function. Okay, so I'll make a bridge that goes from this to into this. To be able to have this custom made 2D cross section, we'll need to save them in our library. We'll go to library, uh, the project, okay, Champlain Bridge with Terrain. I'll create a new, and I'll say bridge cross section 2D section. I'll go here and new symbol will be let's say section one I'll select the symbol and use as the top as a reference point we'll always choose non snoop enabled it's just something complicated and not that useful to use the snoop function so uh, each time it asks you for a symbol just select dumb symbol and ok and I'll save this also in the catalog I'll go to library new symbol section 2 ok this is and now we Place it here <coughs> to make things even more interesting and to simulate real bridges. We'll also create a third section where we'll rotate it a bit. So I'm copying this cross section and we'll do a rotation of the section because usually they have to have a constant uh, slope. And also, uh, they need to have this inclination sometimes, when, especially when making a turn to compensate the, let's say, the centrifugal force, or I don't know. No, when we move in a curve, there's a force that tries to move you off the road. So this is why bridge have these tendencies of rotating their section so it compensates this force so this will be section 3 okay let's go to library section 3 okay it's enough for our examples we don't need them anymore as we have them in library but it was essential that we brought them in the library the cross sections because if we do did this 
now we can use the bridge modeler uh, go to bonus tools uh, we will uh, go to bridge civil engineer file import root the for the root will be example 2 and now we can choose this profile section of root so you can see here import profile section of root and we'll go to this RPR we created and now we can also say how many points we like so we see here the station point offset so we can make more points on the road or uh, less points well, let's say five meters for instance so we get each meter each five meters we get a point we can vary okay okay now it says something regarding the points we have uh, more points on the longitudinal profile than the one in the plane we could have uh, divided it into many planes but we we'll just say okay and uh, we'll see how it uh, will uh, look let's say also isometric Okay, uh, let's uh, try to assign a cross section. I'll say here, right click, define new cross section. And this time we'll be using the ones we defined, get cross section from symbol catalog. And we'll go to project, not private, but project. And we have this uh, folder. Uh, why is it X? Uh, if it's X, they don't like the cross sections. Just a second. Okay, uh, they don't like the cross section. I'll do it again. I know that one cross section wasn't. Okay, yes. I'll do with 2D over it. There's something, it's something not closing, I'm sure, that's the problem. But uh, rather than investigate, I'll just uh, throw it over it and uh, have... So they, they get that error if, it, they, if it's something wrong with this uh, cross-section. We'll go like this with polyline. Line. And can you please uh, draw half of this cross section just over it, snap to the point, just half of it. Okay. Mm hmm. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and now uh, draw the inner part, also half of it. Okay. And let's move this line. Okay. And I'll mirror it and check if it's okay with him. And then we'll do the variation. Oh, no. 
Uh, can you mirror it? <laughs> it's uh, harder with TeamViewer. Oh yeah, <laughs> the other. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I'm replacing it because the first was not okay. Before doing the modification, I'm going to test if this one is okay. Actually, I don't need to do all this. I forgot. I just saved. Or I did. Hmm. I, I thought I saved it as example two, but it seems I didn't save it. Example two. I said five meters. At least section one works now. So we can do the changes and create the other sections as well. That was something we didn't like about the 2D drawing. Uh, so we'll now create the other the changes as well. So even if we were going to design this bridge, it would be easier just to do a 2D section and then do some variations like this, like we're doing now, than uh, changing all those parameters. I want to keep the number of points so I won't go in that area. If I overlapped with uh, the middle, I would have lost a point. Okay, and thirdly, we'll do a rotation. And now we're saving back to library with the same name, so we eliminate the faulty ones.
Hmm. I'm not sure did I, did I save it. Section 3. Yes. It doesn't really matter the point I pick because I'll show you we can choose where is the red line according to this section. Okay, so we finish with this uh, sections. We'll go back to the bridge model. Actually, uh, let's load the bridge. Yes, I saved it. Okay, example two. Okay, and just change the cross section. I can choose from this catalog the first section. Here are the points, so we get 17 points. And also, we can choose this as a reference point, so the red line should be placed on top of the middle, so point 17 will be where the red line goes. Actually, the red line should go upper than 17. It will also add the thickness of this slab. Uh, and uh, so point 17, I right click here. Uh, that is first point. No, I wanted to make this reference point. So actually, no, this is okay. This is the first point, point one. This one. Okay. No, it's okay. And here we can uh, uh, define reference point and we'll choose it to be point number one. So this way we know that the line is centered in point one because we gave the line the red line and we want the sections to be placed like this. Okay, this is most important when we're doing the variation. So now we'll choose another point. Let's see here on this uh, legend. What? Why? Because uh, I want to do a variation. I don't want to be constant cross section. I want to change it. For instance, I want to change it here in the middle of this orange part. I wanted to make the, another cross section. So, for instance, in this point, I'll say uh, define new cross section. And here, here I'll choose the second section two. And okay. So now they the section will change like this. Uh, let's go from the first point. You see. So now it travels how we said. So it's that curved path. It varies as height. But also, you see, they get a transition. If we don't want, if we want the transition only between some points, we just uh, assign the first section between. So I choose some 200 something. I forgot 200 how much. But if we were to do the transition from 100, let's say from point to 100, I would say here define cross section. I will choose section one here. So our bridge will have the same section for a certain distance and then it will change only on a portion it will change into something else. So you see now we get like this constant section up until well this should be should be established not in this interface but in plan when doing the bridge design we should uh, establish where we would place the pillars because this bigger cross section is usually placed where where the pillars are so under uh, a pillar we need a taller cross section from for structural reasons we need more capacity so the taller the section the greater the capacity 
So this is actually in the design phase established in plane. So there is no mystery where we should change the cross section. Normally, if we were to design the bridge, it would be no mystery because we first do some analysis of it and we know exactly at which distance in plane or actually not in plane, or in which distance according to this line, we need to change the cross section on which portion. So this is not something uh, we don't know. Now we didn't do anything, we didn't do the analysis, we just changing some settings. Because I want to show you how the program works. And then to adapt it to Champlain Bridge where we have a lot of unknowns. But uh, it's essential to know how this uh, software works and what it can do. We'll figure something to look nice also for especially your project. Now also the turning. You see it's I turn the section and now it uh, it will also do this turning between those points. So this is mainly how it will uh, work. Uh, the only thing is uh, we sh I should have noted down where I changed the section because you see here with red it's called the reference point. The problem is uh, we would need to the reference points to keep it similar so just a second. Uh, here the reference point, point is offset. It's not point 1. So I'll need to change this. I'll say here, uh, but not on this cross section, I think on this one. Mm. Well, I think this is where I actually placed, yes. So 290. I'll say edit reference point. You see that ref P. It should be the same point. Otherwise it wouldn't respect the geometry. So the red line always goes through this red point. And the cross section may rotate, may change height. It's no problem, but it needs to be the top middle point of the row. And then we can, I don't know, after 50 points or at point 300, we make it the same section again. Uh, that's section 2. We define new cross section and create section 2. And at 400, we get the same uh, 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 We don't have that many points. Well, from here, we'll go back to section 1. Actually, the long bridge, it's easier. As you've seen, um, it's constant. They don't change that much. You can also look on the map. We'll look together. Uh, it doesn't change that much. The cross section. However, in the pre-feasibility, there are a lot of changes uh, for the different proposals. They change the section. Uh, if we go to maps, well, here is not the best. There was also some pictures you had in pre-feasibility. You have other pictures with the bridge, with uh, let's say isometric view. I need a view from under the bridge, if you have any. Yeah, but you've shown me when you were looking for prefeasibility, you had some pictures in among those PDFs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You had it there in the folder. No, not in this report, but uh, where you place the report. You place. You had this report in a folder. You had that report in a folder with many PDFs. There are some pictures there. That's all you have. Here. Uh, there are some pictures here. 
uh, it's only from above uh, okay even this uh, I think lower on the cover there was there were some pictures so not not uh, plans but uh, real site pictures Actually, uh, just this one. L leave it like this. The the first one is okay. Okay, uh, we ignore first the steel part. For steel, we'll do intensia engineer. But uh, uh, you get here constant. Okay, it's not that clear, but it's constant. It doesn't vary. Even if we look here. Uh, on the internet it's only from above of course it's from aerial view but it's constant they didn't change it's not economical to yes for the old bridge there is no change but uh, if you're going to do also the proposals you'll see there are a lot of changes yes yes indeed yeah okay but uh, this is how we would do on any bridge so on any bridge the deck uh, it's essential that the bridge follows the red line that's one condition for design the red line is obtained either is uh, created by the, the road designers and it can be exported as a line in plane and uh, a longitudinal profile with the variation on the Z coordinate. Or it can be exported as points. So X, Y, Z points, we can divide it into two uh, file points, let's say. The first would be X, Y and the other would be X, Z and complete in this uh, modular. After we are doing this... Uh, Okay, I'm also going to export this bridge. Uh, file, export root, and I'll place somewhere at zero zero coordinates. So after we create this bridge, we actually created only the top part of it. Uh, let's remove the other. Don't need them anymore. I'll paste this in another drawing. Okay, but where is this? Okay, here is our bridge. Uh, so this is our bridge. It has vertical. You've seen it's it, that polyline we created, and it also has variation. So here it goes. You can spin it yourself if you like. We you have a, It starts with a cross section we gave. It then changes the cross section there and also rotates. You see on that. Uh, curve the fact that the cross section rotates so mainly if we were to design of course in plane we establish where we need which cross section and we know the points because on plane we should divide the line let's say every five meters we divide the line and then we establish between 200 and 300 the points we have this cross section we need the slope we do this rotation so that is a preliminary design stage 
but then this is the modeler which will help us do this in uh, 3D. Basically, this is how we we model. You see, it's also is varying vertically. It's not straight in plane. And uh, most important for the construction engineers, so those who will be on site, we can also export them points. So they can place. We can. I just edit it here. We can give this export route to Excel. And uh, here. Let's see, points for contractor. It will be a pretty big file, but this is something that is also required. So in order to build this bridge, they need coordinates to be sure they, they are placing it where it should be. So the program will export each point. So you see here we have one to 400 points uh, for the points where it passes the cross section, but there will also be 19 points for each cross section. So they can check any time the coordinates, they can measure coordinates and know that they are uh, doing the correct project. Uh, it shouldn't take too much just wait a bit and uh, mainly this what <laughs> hopefully not yes uh, you don't have space you should try with uh, C cleaner you know the application C cleaner it's a free application that uh, removes temporary files it cleans up the system because it, there's a problem with computer if uh, you run out of space everything works slower uh, okay hopefully it won't take all day okay 25% it's a good sign okay uh, out of space Let's uh, install also that application, it will help you. It will uh, delete uh, cache data and uh, cookies and things you don't need. See, clean temporary files. This cleaning your PC. Well, if you know you have application, you can download, of course. You can uninstall. It's not a bad idea. Okay. Okay, it started downloading. Fifty percent. Okay, what I'd like you to do is try what I've shown you today, example one and example two, maybe, and then uh, we'll do together the bridge because it might be more complicated. We need to bind to yes 
via coordinates. So as I tried with the RPR points. So, oh, you have two lines from the road. No, we'll, we'll make it as separate bridges. And uh, yes, yes, I remember. Yes, no, we divide the lines. We, we actually, although you created a continuous line, we'll make portions. And then in the intersection, we'll do some modeling. We can also, I think, yeah, let me think. No, uh, we will divide in more lines. So, basically, and then we'll think what we can do in the intersection, but we'll need to have the same cross section. We can't do it automatically to import two uniting lines and then become one line. I don't think the software supports that. So we'll just to create two section and then in the intersection we'll create something that uh, compensates. Hmm. Okay, start trial. I thought it was free. I don't know why it. Okay. Okay, but where is that point file? Yes, they gave us more files, one with measuring, measuring what, global, local, per global and per local, I know exactly the differences between them, I think they gave more, in more systems, measuring systems. So they get here the, for each station points, they get the coordinates for each cross section, so each point has a, uh, 19 points that define this section. I'm not sure why there are three points. Oh, because it's X, Y, Z. That's why. So for point station point one, they get the X, Y, Z for each point defining the cross section. So this is how they can check check on site that they respected the coordinates and they're according. Okay, so what I'd like you to do for tomorrow until we meet, I'd like you to look at the map and divide the, the lines in between segments so we know where we have constant uh, cross sections. Okay. Yes, and maybe you can change colors. So you you place different colors for the lines as uh, as if they are different bridges. So we then it will be easier for us to define a cross section and create a bridge throughout that line. Because once we create this deck for the bridge, it's easy for us just to play the vertical to place the vertical elements underneath it, and then just some details, some lighting. And the big chapter would be also the steel modeling for the steel part of the old Champlain bridge. And basically this is how we'll assemble. So we need uh, to, uh, for next time, for tomorrow, I'd like you to uh, change colors to divide the portions that should be constant with the same cross section. And maybe also think of a cross section, do some measurements or approximation to establish how the cross section should look like. We can do any cross sections as we don't have too much information. We can even use from library. 
the software now. Okay. Okay. 